tired tonight. You guys sound tired. You you've driven too far. Maybe maybe we should just we should just we should just keep on driving, you know, but uh, tonight we want to welcome you here and uh, anybody from Salt Lake City here tonight. Yeah, amen. Amen. Good, good. Good to have each and every one. And I know we will from from St. George. Come on. St. George is in the, in the place in the house tonight. Amen. Uh, well, we put together a little group tonight. And they're called Singers of Praise. I just branded them, amen? Because that's what we're going to do tonight. So uh, 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 we're not really going to do too many solos. You're, you're going to have to sing along with us. And uh, we're not doing anything too complicated. No key changes or anything like that. So y'all will be fine singing along with us tonight, amen? Uh, let's just bow our heads as we enter into this season of worship. And I'm going to ask the praise team slash choir, singers of praise, to just come on up. Don't be shy. They're all looking beautiful and handsome. Uh, put your hands together for, for them. Just come on up. As we pray, Father God, thank you for bringing us safely to this place. And we pray, Lord, that we will all experience the power tonight. We have come to hear a word from you. May your spirit reign. May your spirit be uplifted tonight. May each and every person here tonight who has come to receive a blessing, receive that blessing from you, for only you alone can give it, Lord. Bless that whatever we do tonight will be done to glorify your name. Be with our preacher. Be with us. Pray session. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The first song we're going to sing is... Uh, Lord, I lift your name on high. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's put your hands together and give God some praise. We're going to start off with, Lord, I lift your name on high, and I just ask that you, you join us in giving God all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Brother Dennis, we're going to speed it up just a little bit. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in. So glad you came. So glad you came to sing. Do that again, Lord. I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. I'm so glad. And I'm so glad you came. Lift them up. You came from heaven. Show the way show from the, the way earth. From the earth to my dead to pay. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on. High. Let's take it back to the top. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. Sing it out. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Last time, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. 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 Here we 
are to worship. Here we come to bow down and say that you are my God. Help us sing. And, and I get to sing the verses not because of it, it's a solo, just because I know the words. So let's go, light of the world. Light of the world, you stepped out. Open my eyes. Open my eyes, let me. A little faster. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Beauty that made this heart a hope of a life spent with you hope of a life spent with you come on anybody here to worship tonight here i am here i am to worship here i am to of all day. became poor. All for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. Come on, you know the song? Here I am to bow. Here I am to say. Here I am to say that you're mine. Speak to your Savior tonight. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together one. There's a song that says, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. I'll never know. to see my sins, see my sins upon that. One more time, I'll never know, I'll never know how much it costs to see together lovely you're all together lovely all together worthy all to can we do that just with the voices here i am to worship come on everybody say it like you mean it here i am to All together, all together, lovely, all together, worthy, all together, wonderful to me. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we'll call for Bishop McLeod to give us welcome and an opening prayer. 
Amen. Before we pray, even though we cannot see him, our invisible guest of honor, do you really believe that he's in this place right now? And if you really believe that he's here, can we praise him for all that he have done? He is a good God. He is an awesome God. Amen. And he is worthy to be praised. Amen. He is about. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your tender mercy and your ever-loving kindness. Truly, you have been good to us. And we have come that we might have a spiritual encounter with thee, Father. We ask that you look in on the speaker of the hour. Out of all the men or women that you could have called, you have designated him to come from the east to preach and teach the everlasting gospel. Allow your spirit to dominate his mind, control his lips and his heart, May we be encouraged and strengthened. May we be more Christ-like in our character. Now we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Clean up our minds. Clean our mouth up. Clean our hands and our feet up. May your name be glorified and honored in this place. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. I had to get up here because I'm not as tall as the rest. Welcome to Convocation 2013. Let me tell you something. We've had some skips and some bumps and all kinds of different things. But you know what? I found out with God. In spite of our imperfection, he's a perfect God. You didn't hear what I just said. He's a perfect God. We've all gotten here somehow safely. Can we give God, God praise for that this evening? And I know that there are those who are on their way. We're thankful that our administration are with us, our president, Elder Larry Unterseer, and our executive secretary, Jason. We're glad. To, let's welcome them this evening. They're very, very supportive of uh, we, what we do, and we're appreciative of having them here. I want to say welcome to our good friend, Brother Freddie Russell here. Those of you who don't know him, you can read his bio. We'll get to know him a little better tomorrow. But um, I want you to... Pay attention to what's going on now. We had a little mix-up with the food, but praise the Lord. The Lord direct, even though the bus got lost. We were in the right place at the right time, and G God's timing is amazing. You remember we were in the car, Pastor Freddy, and we saw this big white thing come out of nowhere. And I said, the children of Israel will not be going around this city 40 years. They must go to the promised land. They must taste the manna, and God brought us all together. He's an amazing God with an amazing sense of humor. But we're glad we're here. Thank you so much, Pastor Sheldon, for hosting us. You may be all the way out there, but one thing I want you to know. No church, no matter how broad the territory is here in Nevada, Utah, you are important to us. You are important to us. That's why we rotate the convocation so that everybody gets the taste of something. Now, this week's theme is what? Oh, no, some of you haven't been reading. Okay. Ha well, first of all, how many of you shall receive a program? 
If you don't have one, go and get one now if you can. I want you to pay attention. You shall receive power. Now, I want us to be praying throughout the course of this weekend because, you know, themes and slogans come and go. But we were praying. We were praying for the theme. I was amazed when I saw the, um, the devotional written by Ellen White of the same title. We really do because Christ is coming soon. We need the last infusion of power to get this work completed. While he's doing it in us, he can touch others. So this weekend, it's not the numbers, it's not the this or that. Make up your mind that when, by the time you go back, you want Jesus to do something special, something different for you. How many of you want to make that commitment? You know, even if you don't believe it, say, Lord, I'm going to do it anyhow. Amen? Tell the person next to you, by the grace of God, we're going to get this thing done. Come on, talk to somebody. You, you, you need to make a commitment. Didn't, you didn't come here to be entertained. You didn't come here to be, we came here to have an experience and an encounter with Jesus in everything we do. And I've asked the Lord, the pastors have been praying with me to put this together. All kinds of obstacles we've overcome in the last 24 hours. And God is consistent. God is good. God is dependable. Um, tomorrow, everything will convene at Calvary Baptist Church. Some of you have found the church in finding the other church. Amen. Yes, sir. Is that right? Okay. Early morning breakfast is here. Is that right? Are you sure? Okay, they're cooking, so I guess we have early morning, and then the lunch will be over at Calvary Baptist. So come here. Please don't eat that unsanctified food in the hotel. <laughs> oh, some of you are guilty already. <laughs> but the Comfort Inn did promise us veggie turkey. They did. Carl told me that today. So who knows? He might be an Adventist by the time we're, we're done this weekend. He's done a wonderful job to make us feel comfortable. But tomorrow morning at uh, what time? 8 o'clock? What have we got in the bulletin there? Should be 7? 7.30. 7.30 to 8.30. Now people, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, 7.30 to 8.30. You can make it over here. They will fix breakfast, and then it's just 15 minutes from here, about 10 minutes from here to Calvary Baptist. We want you to get something good and wholesome. We don't want you spending any money. We just want you to relax. And as you're going back and forth, take in the sights of the city. Okay? Even go and visit the tabernacle after the services are all done, not before. Okay? It's a beautiful city. It's a lovely, clean city, and we're glad to be in Salt Lake. And then everything, as you see it, will be over at Calvary Baptist right up until in the evening, the concert, plus the, uh, spe the, speaking, engage uh, the speaking program with uh, Pastor Davis, and whom you will meet. She is here, a lovely lady, with her husband. And just follow the bulletin and listen to the announcements. I don't want to take any more of Pastor Freddie's time, but right now we're going to have our special music, and I heard something being done at the piano, when I walked in here, I had to stand. Because every time I hear this particular song, it causes me to stand and pray. There's some songs that just stop you in your tracks because God wants your attention for that moment. And so I'm going to ask the, the what are they? singers of praise to come on up. And after that, we will give the time over to Pastor Russell. So let's bring them on as they minister to us in music. Thank you. Amen, amen. Anybody anticipating a great word tonight? Nobody, anybody expecting a great word tonight? Anybody believing for a great word tonight? Amen. You know, we're so, so grateful to have each and every one of you here. We just want to sing the song of praise to God for his glorious blessing.
church say amen again. Amen. Put your hands together for our <laughs> praise and to him. I, I am delighted to be for my very first time uh, in Utah. Uh, I got 10 more states to go. Let the church say amen. amen. And of course, this is just awesome, beautiful territory uh, as we landed today from Atlanta. Pastor Davis, uh, my associate pastor, is uh, resting up. We are in the midst in Atlanta of an evangelistic meeting going on right now. Uh, my other associate taught uh, tonight. Uh, and so we stole away from the weekend, could not be at a better place. Uh, and we're uh, land back in Atlanta on Sunday afternoon, uh, and then we go back into work uh, on Sunday night. I want to first to honor our president, uh, my good friend, uh, Pastor Larry, uh, who came up uh, from Las Vegas today, uh, who probably has one of the most expansive territories uh, to lead in the whole North American division along with his incredible uh, executive secretary, get a chance to meet uh, today. Uh, just a joy uh, to be around these men of God. Uh, of course, uh, Pastor Wayne, where is he? Uh, Pastor Wayne and I uh, go back to Oakwood days. Now, he's a lot older than me. I want to make sure you're clear on that. Uh, he, used to, he used to help me cross the street. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, always good to be around uh, he and his uh, lovely wife uh, and family, Pastor uh, Pastor Sheldon, uh, where did he go? Uh, just an excellent host uh, tonight. Let me uh, uh, camp out in his office and just already impress uh, with your spirit. Uh, but glad to be with Pastor uh, Kingsley uh, Palmer. Uh, he and I, tr I am older than he, literally by two days. Amen, 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 amen. I got no card for you for my birthday. I want to make sure you're clear on that. Uh, uh, but I was born on August 6th. Uh, he was born on August 8th. Uh, he's just the better looking of both of us. Uh, let the church say amen. Uh, and uh, you owe me for that, Pastor. This is, this is wonderful. I have been, and Pastor Davis and I both, uh, have been praying about this weekend. We have no, and you have, uh, no desire to come this weekend and have a nice convocation, nice music, and say, it was nice, had great food, and we go home. Guys, remember that uh, what they have on the front of the bulletin means something. It says we shall receive power. What would you think if this weekend you receive that power? Is it possible? And that's not preacher mumble jumble. That's uh, not uh, preacher hyperbole uh, that I'm talking about. I'm simply saying uh, that this weekend, very well, that can happen to you. Uh, in terms of what it's talking about is receiving, listen to this, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what's talked about. Uh, and um, that is not some super experience where uh, you chalk it away and, uh, oh, that was nice. Uh, but it, 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 it takes your life uh, to a place, listen to these words, where you become a radical follower of Jesus Christ. It upsets your life. It turns everything on its head. Your whole way of approaching your life shifts at that point. Uh, there's this thing called a paradigm shift, and uh, it is alleged uh, that you can only, that's where your whole worldview, uh, the whole way that you approach your life uh, is turned on its head. And it is alleged that you can only go uh, through one, no more than two paradigm shifts in your life. And what I'm saying to you is that when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, everything shifts, everything turns. And I'm going to try to set it up this uh, evening. We're going to go to uh, further tomorrow, and then at the end uh, of everything on tomorrow evening, Pastor Davis, who is under a true anointing by God, uh, is going to close. We're going to just wait in God's presence and watch what God does. How many of you understand that you can't dictate to the Holy Spirit? Anybody know that? How many know that you cannot drive and orchestrate? Uh, you got to step back uh, and allow the Spirit to do what he will do. Uh, and one of the things we've been praying for a long time uh, some of you have already received the baptism of the water, but you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says you must be born of the water and you must be born of the Spirit. And he says both are unnecessary. And we're going to set this up uh, tonight as we go forward. Let me first acknowledge uh, a brother uh, who is truly a brother uh, that we have been knowing each other almost all of our lives. We uh, came up in the same church together. Uh, brother Dennis, who has been playing tonight, uh, we come from Greensboro, North Carolina. 
Uh, he came from out in the country and moved to Greensboro to the city. And uh, <laughs> so don't let him fool you that he's from the city. He's from the country. That's where he's from. And when I walked in tonight and we saw each other, I just stood. I, we have not seen each other in over 20 years. And I am so glad to see him tonight. Uh, his mom been known for years and didn't know until the night that she had passed some years ago as well as his dad. Uh, but you are blessed to have this man out here. He is passionate when it comes to the music and worship of God. Put your hands together uh, for Brother Dennis tonight in this place. Well, well, let's pray. Holy Spirit, tonight um, I am so aware that if I open my mouth tonight, and I begin to speak my own words, it shall be what sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Lord, I am trying to be so submitted to you this evening as we take our time to allow you to build this weekend. Uh, Pastor Palmer and his staff, and his, especially the pastors, have been crying out to God over the last few weeks, asking you, Lord, to, to not to have a nice convocations. We are tired of nice convocations. We're tired of nice camp meetings. Uh, Lord, we want to see you. We want to encounter you, God. And this weekend, Lord, way up here in Salt Lake City, Utah, is it possible that Acts 2 can happen here? Now, Father, we talk about this so often in our denomination, in our church, but Lord, sometimes, God, uh, we, we talk about it and we become very fearful of what you may do if you actually take over our lives. Yeah. And so, Lord, I'm praying right now, the Holy Spirit, that you would now set the atmosphere for this entire weekend. And we submit ourselves to you for our prayer is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you have worship in the morning? You take our time to have time with God. Have you been in one of those moments with God? And just allow me to talk uh, tonight. And uh, the older I get, the more I just like to slow it down and teach the word. And uh, I want you to buckle your seatbelts tonight because in about 15 minutes, you're going to see something that you probably have never seen before that comes straight out of the word of God. So I want you to turn to the person to you on your left and right tonight. Tell them, buckle your seatbelts. Get ready. Turn to them again and tell them, I don't know what I'm getting ready for, but get ready. Just let them know. Just let them know. Let me introduce my wife uh, as well. Uh, raise your hand, Brenda. Where are you? Where are you? Right here uh, is my wife. Uh, I robbed the cradle. Let the church say that I know I did. Um, but as, as I get older, she gets prettier. Let the church say amen <laughs> anyhow. And in fact, we go into stores and they say, is, is this your daughter? I used to get upset. Now I tell her, where's your mother? Come on. <laughs> but about a year or so ago, a couple of years ago, I was up early one morning. I have discovered, just follow me, everybody. I have discovered the power of getting up early and seeking his face. I don't know why I was so dumb all of those years of just hitting and missing it with God. When God was saying, Russell, come to the table. There is so much that I want to offer you. But when your life is always moving and you're always working for God, it is easy to work for God and lose contact with God. It, it is easy, you know, to, to begin to serve God over time out of your emptiness as opposed to out of your fullness. I'm saying something tonight. Well, uh, about a couple of years ago, I was, uh, almost a couple of years ago, I was up early one morning uh, just worshiping and and, and every now and, uh, and again, God overwhelms you. He comes into your worship room, and he comes in such a strong way that, that you find yourself flat on your face. Can I get a witness, anybody? Now, that don't happen every single morning. But, but, but he does offer something uh, to those who seek his face with a level of hunger for him. You, you got to come to the place where you hunger for God, not for what God can do for you. You come to the place where you want God just for God. Oh, I said something there. That, 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 was, that, that was fun. Let me try one more time. Push the rewind button, Russell. Come back again. You, you, you arrive at the place of where you want God not for the payoff. 
Not because he's going to bless you. You've you seen people who are always at the blessing level. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, God. Give me, give me, give me. And God says, I'm looking for those who come to the place who want me not because of what I can give them. They want me just because I'm God. Okay, we'll get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Well, I was up early one morning, and God threw me for a loop that morning. Uh, I was not expecting what he was about to show me in the word. Uh, you know, you start reading around uh, Chronicles, you know, have you, how many understand you can fall asleep on Chronicles, you know? It, it's only so many baguettes that you can deal with. You know, uh, uh, after they have beget the 15,000 person, it, it becomes a quick cure for insomnia. Uh, that was good. Anyway, I didn't keep moving. Well, I, I, was, uh, I was up that morning, and I had slipped over uh, there in the first Kings, and I was now on that morning, I was in second Kings. And, 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 and it landed on a very familiar story. The, the only problem with reading things in the Bible that you have read before, especially stories, is that you already know the punchline. You, you, you already know the takeaway. You already know what it's going to say, so you just sort of uh, go on brain freeze. You go on neutral uh, because at that point, you just already know the story. You know where it's going to go. You have seen it from every angle you can come at it. But every now and again, God shows you more in the familiar. He, he, he arrives at a place sometime, and you're saying, God, hold it. I never saw that before. God says, that's why I gave it to you. And that morning, God showed me some things that just blew me out the water. 2 Kings chapter 4. Let me just set it up for you. Just let me. Can I just walk tonight? Y'all mind if I walk? Okay, let me be Socratic with this thing and just walk tonight. Turn your heads on back here. Front row right here. Turn back. Everybody right here. I'm right here. Now, now watch this. Well, 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 that morning, I was uh, just talking to God. I was in the word. How many of you know the value of, of watch this, everybody, of just waiting in the presence of God? Yeah. I mean, you're not doing anything but just you and God. Yeah. You're just waiting in his presence because, because there is a power of not rushing out of the presence of God. That's why Morris Vinden was so, I thought uh, the late Morris Vinden was so prolific. And in fact, uh, it was when I met the Lord, I got hold of his tapes uh, uh, at that point in college. Uh, but, but he says, what you want to do, you don't want to have morning devotion uh, 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 by reading a text for the day with your hand on the doorknob. That you just, you just pray about, about a few seconds. In fact, Christianity Today uh, came out with an article about two or three years ago, and they did a study on the length of time that people pray, and they found out that the average Christian prays less than two and a half minutes per day. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Less, uh, less, uh, and you're saying, and you can almost picture the father and saying, come on, I have so much more. I want to give to you, but you never talk to me. You know, Lonel was correct that, that maybe in that song that there may be some truth to it where um, uh, 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 in the words of Jesus, I miss my time with you, uh, those moments together. And I am discovering the older I get that those moments together with God are some of the most potent times that there are. And so that morning, I'm just reading uh, Second Kings and I'm reading this text you're about to see on the screen. And I'm reading it, and I get to it, and I say, I know this story. And uh, let me get through it so I can pray and so I can head to the church and I can begin to go to work and begin to minister. And God says, Freddie Russell, no, you will not. There's something this day I'm going to pour into you that can literally transform your life. Look at the screen, everybody. Uh, the, the, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets. So this is uh, the woman where a, a, a light uh, shot. Uh, uh, begins to have her the fill uh, the uh, the empty vessels with oil and and the oil stops and you know the story already but I mean I want you to pay attention one of the best things that can happen to you is to be in an experience of self discovery in the Word of God you know it was never God's plan for for us to have preachers you know that right uh, because remember back in Exodus chapter thirty three and before that God look at me everybody God wanted to speak to His people directly. And the people said, no, no, give us a preacher. You give Moses. You talk to Moses and let Moses talk to us. And God was offended. It was never God's purpose to have a man or woman with Pastor Davis tomorrow stand before you and teach you the word. God says, I want to talk to you directly. 
People will go a million miles in the Adventist church to, to hear a good preacher, and they never open the word of God. And God is saying, here I am. I have the word right here, and you never allow me to talk to you directly. And so, and so, and so it's not always good to, to have to have a preacher to teach you something. But sometimes when you are in the word yourself, waiting in the presence of God, and allow God to begin to give you those aha moments. But God, this, oh God, I, I see this thing. And so that morning I had one of those aha moments. Watch this. Now, by the way, it, it, when you get this, uh, I just want you to stand to your feet when you get this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just take my time to go through it. I'll be finished in a few minutes, but it won't take that long. It's a short passage of scripture. There is something here. You're going to see some things that's going to come up. You want to look at what is, the, what is the symbol of that. And when you and if you get this before I give it to you, I just want you to come to your feet when you get it. Now, here it is. Watch the scripture so I can look at the screen. Have my back to you a little while. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah. Uh, in other words, her husband uh, was a part of the seminary uh, that Elisha was operating, where men were learning uh, how to become uh, prophets of God and to enter the, the prophetic uh, call over their lives. Now, now, whatever you do, everybody, look at me, Ben. Whatever you do tonight, don't let Satan fan you to sleep. I know it's the end of a long day. You've been traveling all day, but you've got to see this. Look at the person beside you and say, don't go to sleep. Just say it that way. You got to say it with attitude. One more time, tell them, don't go to sleep. Okay, here, here we go. Now watch this. Now let me set it up for you. She's talking about her husband. Now, now watch this. Watch life invade this text. Watch this. Your servant, uh, Elijah, your servant, my husband, the woman talking about, your servant, my husband, is dead. In other words, uh, she is a grieving widow uh, that is coming to Elijah. Now watch this. It, it gets more complicated. How many of you understand uh, that, that, that life can go bad and then it gets complicated? Can, you, can I raise a hand, everybody? Yeah, you've been there. And if you cannot raise your hand, hold on. Uh, trust me. It's, it's going to come. Now, now, now watch this. The wife, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried at life, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know, and I like this part right here. She says, and you know, you, now, now guys, man, if you're a man tonight, raise your hand high. Come on, guys. No, 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 no. Just you. Raise your hand if you're a man. Now, now, guys, I like this part here. And she says, and you know that, that my husband revered the Lord. Now, get this, everybody. Her husband is dead. She can easily say, that, that boy is no good at all. But, 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 the, but I, I said, when I read this, I said, I want my wife to be able to do that about me. When I'm not even around and, and, and maybe dead, she says, and, and Elijah, you know, I know and you know that my husband revered the Lord. Hey, brothers, what can our wives say about us? <sighs> wow. She says, and you know that my husband, you know, I know, we both know that my husband revered the Lord. But, but, but now watch the complication of life. Her husband is already what, everybody? Okay, now, now watch life complicates. Uh, but, but, but now his creditor uh, is coming. I mean, how many of you had creditors come after you before? Come on, don't lie. Come on, just raise your hand uh, tonight. You know, come, come on, get real with the rest of us uh, tonight. You know, those, you know, those red letter edition creditors? Uh, okay, all right, okay. But, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Now understand what's going on here. Back in those days, uh, they didn't just put a lien on your property. Uh, they didn't garnish you your check. They didn't lower your FICO score, okay? They, they took your children, sold your children into slavery to pay off your creditors. Now look at the complications, guys. This is life. This is a true story. My husband is dead, and you think that will be enough uh, to, to last her for her days, that she's got her trial and tribulations that she's in right there. But now her two sons, who are small, and she's hoping they will grow up to be able to support her. Her creditors are coming, and they're saying, now, we know your husband is dead. We're going to take you two boys. We're going to sell them into slavery, and they're going to. And she is coming, and her heart is broken, and she's desperate, and she does not have a plan B. You ever been there before when you don't have a plan B? You don't have a fallback position. You don't know what you're going to do. Can I get a witness anybody here tonight? I've been there. I've been there. And so there is no plan B. You know, she, she can't get on the cell phone and, 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 and call her family. She can't email. She can't take out a, a same-day loan. Oh, 
y'all, 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 y'all
Anybody got it yet? Just come to your feet and keep standing. If you got it, just stand up. You ain't got it. Okay. okay, you ain't got it. Let me teach it to you. Watch your hands about it. Let me just talk it through. Oil represents what? Empty vessels represent who? And that morning, I'm screaming because I'm a demonstrable guy, uh, O'Bannon. I begin to scream at the top of my lungs. I said, oh, God, I get it. I get it. Oh, you just all the cords you got, Dennis, slowly, if you can. Watch this. God showed me. He says, hey, Freddie, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. The vessels represent my people. And it represents your life. As long as there are empty vessels, the oil kept flowing. But when there were no more empty vessels, the oil stopped. And God says, Freddie, as long as you come to me empty, I can keep filling you. But when you get so arrogant, you come to be full, and there's nothing else that you have need of me, he says the oil will stop. I says, God, I thought my job was to be filled. He says, no, Freddie, when you are filled with my Holy Spirit, understand you are a very leaky vessel. He says, you got to be filled over and over again. Every single morning you wake up, you got to ask for a fresh supply of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he says, Freddie, at the point that you come, become so full in your life, and I can't take you anywhere else, the oil of the Holy Spirit will cease in your life. And God said to me that morning, you know what you need, Brother Russell? You need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit every single day. I said, what does that mean, God? He says to receive the Holy Spirit means that you are filled up with God. And I says, God, I want your baptism all over again. And he says, Freddie, a lot of the people that you teach to and preach to have only received water baptism. And he says, but they must be born also of the Spirit. And he says the reason that so many churches and people are weak in the church is that God, he says, they are close enough to God to feel good, but they live far enough away from him not to change and not to even to sense their need of him. And God says, what is the thing that folk most need? He says it's right there in the theme on the front of the bulletin. That's where Pastor Palmer stood the night. He said, you read the cover and we shall receive power. And the Holy Spirit says, I am more, God says, I am more willing to give you that baptism of the Holy Spirit than you are willing to ask. At some point during this weekend, we're going to fall. And there will be some of you in this room that will desire to receive the baptism of God's Holy Spirit. Some, it will be fresh. Some, it will be for the very first time. And I'm not talking about craziness where people are bouncing off the walls. Don't, don't take a counterfeit. I'm talking about there's, there is something when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, your whole view of life, your optics when it comes to life, everything changes. And you become what I talked about at the top of the night is that you become a radical, a radical follower of Jesus Christ. Your mind, your thoughts, the way you respond comes out of, you, you have a biblical worldview. In other words, uh, you, you live your life through the prism of the word of God is that you're not thinking carnal thoughts, you're not thinking secular stuff. It's always about the word. How do I respond as a Christian? That's when the Holy Spirit comes and fill your life. But he said, I can't do it for you uh, starting this weekend unless you come to me empty. You come to me as an empty vessel. And if you come as an empty vessel, I will keep pouring myself in you, the Holy Spirit said. But at the point in time that you become so full, the Bible says the oil will cease. Tonight, I don't know what God's going to do under this weekend. All I know is a lot of pastors under Pastor Palmer, under our president, our secretary, um, a lot of us have been praying for this weekend. Not only for you, but for us. 
because I am so tired of showing up at church. I'm so tired of going through the motions. I'm so tired of coming to church and folk are watching the architecture of the windowsills and, the, and, and, and just go through the motions and they just do it and, and we just read the bulletin and go through the services. I believe that when the Holy Spirit comes in, you look at the bulletin once and put it to the side because the bulletin cannot control the service. Cannot. It's going to be, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to do here today? And he's an author of order, but his order is all based upon his order. And so tonight I'd like to pray for you and pray for me. I don't know what God is going to do during this. I really don't. All I know is that Kingsley, you've been praying and your team has been praying. And so if you've been praying, how many of you expect God to do something when you've been praying? You actually, how many, I only saw five hands. How many of you expect God to do something when you've been praying? Could it be that this weekend, and I'm not doing preacher mumbo jumbo here, could it be that this is your weekend where everything about your life changes this weekend. Let's pray right now. Father in heaven, I just pray in this place tonight. I cannot get in front of you. We're not going to run in front of you ever, God. But we wait in your presence, God, as to what you are going to do during this weekend. The, 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 the theme for this weekend is not a theme. It's an experience. And God, we're not going to just say it looks nice, it sounds good, it has a, a snappy uh, a phraseology to it. But God, it means something when you said uh, in Acts chapter 2, and Acts chapter 1, you told those disciples, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And Father, my prayer tonight is that before this weekend ends, the Holy Spirit come upon each of us. We wait humbly in your presence for our prayer is in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we say amen for the servant of God? Uh, one announcement I did not make, and before I even make the announcement, I'd like you to do something when you go back to your rooms tonight. If you want to go back changed, spend some serious time in prayer asking God, why did you bring me here in the first place? I'm dead serious. Because we come from three different parts of the conference. What would happen if Acts chapter 4, 23 through 31, Acts chapter 4, 23 through 31. Can you, can you repeat that after me? Acts chapter 4, 23 through 31. There's another story of a second Pentecost. I want you to read it. You know where I'm going with this. Tonight. And say, Lord, wake me up so I can be in the church, get breakfast, and come for power hour. But sometimes we want to come to, re to, to receive something that we should have already brought to the service. Elder Mitchell will be preaching, but I want you to come prayed up. Let's season this weekend with serious petitions. We're going through transition. This is Salt Lake. You from Vegas, those of us from Reno, we don't want another event. We want an experience. Tell the person next to you, I'm not here for the event. I'm here for the experience. Tell that to somebody sitting next to you, behind you. Not because I told you, but because you, you really mean that. And if you're not sure what you want by being here, thank God you're here anyway. Those of you who wish to be part of the Convocation Mass Choir, the tradition is, am I right, Brother Dennis? Come and join him at the front. And let me tell you something. It's a wonderful thing to, if you can't sing, to watch others who can, praise God, and ask God one fine day, give me perfect pitch. Jesus is coming soon. He's going to make that happen. <laughs> and we give you God thanks for being here tonight, safe and sound. <laughs> Pastor Sheldon, are there any things you want to share with your group before we go? Amen, amen. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight was a beautiful service, very wonderful. Um, I have one other announcement, kind of invitation. I know some of us may have come a little late. 
uh, or may have arrived early for tomorrow morning. Uh, but we do have some additional refreshment. Uh, uh, we've catered for everybody. It's not a problem. We're open to have each and every one feel filled with the Holy Spirit and with other things. So uh, don't leave tonight without getting an opportunity to be blessed physically if, if you weren't able to partake with us earlier or even if you did and uh, you still want a little more, that's okay. Uh, you, you can, you, we can allow that tonight. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we're blessed to have you here. And we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Uh, we will be having breakfast here at 7.30 to 8.30, which is really uh, 6.30 to 7.30, your time. All right, it's 6.30 to 8.30, your time. I'm talking to folks from uh, Vegas and from Reno. Uh, that's, that's about it for us. And I know if you want to be a part of the choir, don't worry if, if, if you don't sing as good as some of the other people. I don't sing that great either, but uh, they allow me to be there. Amen. And if I got in, you can get in too. Amen. So let's praise God together uh, as we worship together. Let's stand as we pray. Dear God, my prayer and my request is simple. We want to come here not just to hear sermons and listen to songs. We are here because we want to be with you. Individualize this request. Personalize it. Help us, Lord, to experience you in a way that we have never done before. And don't let it stop here. We don't come here to be full filled. We came as empty vessels for the weekend to be filled to overflowing. But we don't want it to stop here. Be with those that are still here on their way. Be with us now as we separate from this your holy sanctuary on your holy day. And take us to the places where we need to be. Give us traveling mercies and we ask that you bless us to come together again tomorrow here first and then at second at the Calvary Baptist Church. In the mighty name of Jesus who we love and pray we magnify and we adore and if you agree with me let the people shout Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Choir members, please come on up and uh, we'll have the choir practice. May God be with you as you travel. See you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Those of you who want to join the Mass Choir, please come down to the first two rows on my right, which is your left. Thank you.